All right, I'm here with Dr. William Bauer, known to the world as Bill. Uh, our America's, is this true? It must be true. America's most recent diploma superior. And uh, we're excited to have him for a workshop on uh, October 19th, Saturday, at Lucy Moses, uh, 2 o'clock. And I just wanted to check in with Bill and see what he's planning. Actually, we could talk about our history. We go way back. We do. When, when did we first start harassing each other? Well, it was actually in 2010 at the conference in Boston. Um, when we had the banquet, it was at a restaurant and the banquet was quite full and there were tables all over the place. People were talking and I came in and just plopped myself down at a table all by myself. And you very kindly sat down and joined me. Wow. I have no recollection of that whatsoever. <laughs> That's well, awesome. I've always been grateful to you for that because I was feeling a little bit um, out of the uh, the inner circle, so to speak. Um, so funny. And uh, you and I, I think, at that conference presented a crosstalk or a counterpoint. Yes. Um, it wasn't really a counterpoint, but we were talking about the question wither dalcros and you had written an article about right. it oh, and uh back to me now I yes think i had written something else and it was in the american dalcros journal and kathy thompson urged us to do this and we actually had a nice crowd and an interesting discussion and little did we know that you and i would be involved in shaping the future of dalcros in the united states at that time absolutely it's so funny to me thinking to, to for me to think of you as being an outsider to the Dalcro Society, because for a while we couldn't imagine the Dalcro Society of America without Bill Bauer. <laughs> um, we have since learned uh, uh, that there is life after Bill, but you did so much to shape the way it's running and functioning now. Um, so yeah, I do remember that now. Um, so, and we uh, also, um, did our diploma entrance exam together and we're colleagues all the way through that. Um, I escaped the pandemic. You got caught by the pandemic, but um, I consider you to be my my brother in that regard as well. Yes, we are Dalcro's bros. Yeah. So tell us what we can expect on Saturday. What's What do you got planned? Well, I, I'm very interested in uh, the kind of um, rhythmic energy that's generated by swing in jazz. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if you've listened to Barry Harris talk about this, but he talks about the presence of the quarter note triplet in, in jazz. And so there's, there's always for jazz musicians, the availability of quarter note triplets. They're just there that you can reach out to um, that impulse at any time and solo with it or groove with it or both. Um, and sometimes you're actually creating friction with the groove, which generates this lovely swinging sensation. Um, and sometimes you're steering the groove with uh, the impulse that you're generating. So I'm very interested in sharing that with, um, you know, my Dalcro's, Dalcro's colleagues. Um, and uh, and what's what I've been discovering actually is very interesting is that in a lot of contexts, the two against three that we experience in jazz because of the swing um, eighth notes is not the same as two against three in classical music, which is uh, typically with straight eighth notes. Right. Um, and yeah. so yeah. you actually get a, a little five plus four kind of thing going on. We're not going to get into that too much. I love it's, that. It's, Uh -oh. um, it's it's really going to be more about feeling and sensation, and uh, I really I'm grateful for my training in Geneva because um, I've I've since learned um, that I really want people to feel things in their body before we start to try to understand it any other way. Right. Yeah. I I like um, I'm excited for this possibility. Uh, I sometimes think of that as uh, instead of against. It's, um, it is against in terms of maybe superimposed, but it's sort of a both and instead of a this or that plopped on top of each other. Are you talking about the rhythmic impulse now? Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, a good example is Equinox. Um, if you listen to McCoy Tyner's comping in Equinox, he's playing a lot of what we might think of as dotted quarter notes against quarter notes. Right. But right. because of the jazz swing, it's um, ever so, I call it lazy two against three. Mm -hmm. It's a lazy two against three because it hangs back on the first pulse. You get down, 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 right? Rather than down, da, da, da. They're not even. Right, right. Yes. Um, and if you kind of, uh, you, you can perceive one or the other um, it's kind of freely. Like at one point your perception will, will hear the three and at one point your perception will hear the two and they sort of like the vases and the faces, you know, they just flip back and forth kind of naturally, at least in my experience. Yeah, and I think Coltrane especially loved this because he, you know, obviously did um, Afro Blue, which is a Mongo Santa Maria tune. Um, and uh, and then also really what he does with My Favorite Things um, also has this, um, you know, obviously that was in three, but they they played with that impulse in the, the context of My Favorite Things also. Yeah, so. for sure. Uh, so what if, say, I'm not a jazz player and I don't um, really have any jazz aspirations, will I still get something out of this workshop? Everybody has secret jazz aspirations. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Yes. It's in there. If you're, if, sir, if you're raised in the United States, it's already in there. It's just waiting to come out. Yes. Um, and the thing is, in Dalcros, um, sometimes we study things because they're super practical and we know we're going to walk into a classroom the next day and use what we just learned. But other things are there to stretch us as musicians, to expand our vocabulary as improvisers. And we may not know exactly how we're going to convert that into a lesson that we teach, but um, we're still energized by it. And I'm, I'm really going in that direction with this particular workshop. Um, this is not to say that they use it if they want to, um, and I'm sure there will be ways to, but my primary focus is really just to give people the experience and then um, let them analyze it and make sense of it for themselves and see um, how to make it available for them as improvisers. So we're also going to do some scat singing. Okay. All right. So come to be stretched, come to get your inner, let your inner jazz musician have some fun. And uh, we hope to see you all there Saturday, October 19th, 2 p.m. at the Lucy Moses School. The information for buying tickets and registering is below in the link uh, below the video. And you can also just show up and pay like the old fashioned way. <laughs> there you go. All right. Thank you, Sounds Bill. Like a plan. See you soon. Yes. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Michael. Thank you so much. My pleasure.